Okay, so today I'm going to focus on common beginner mistakes. Uh, these are the things that every beginner does, and some of them stay, like can cankerous, cantankerous tumors uh, for the rest of your life uh, as an artist, because they, uh, God forbid anyone here um, gets a tumor, but, um, knock on wood, knock on wood, uh, but what the problem is with these is that they're, all, they're almost always uh, based on lack of study, lack of practice in one specific field, like I'm not talking about fundamentals, I'm not going to throw the fundamental beach ball on your face, I'm going to say, you know, it's just one tiny little area that you forgot to address in that, you know, landscape of your art journey, it's just one area in the map that's still dark. So um, we're going to talk about that, and then uh, and then I'll show you how, show you what, how, why the reason might be that you do it. Um, that was the most messed up sentence, and uh, what you can do to fix it, or what you can study to fix it. So is anyone here um, curious about any other specific uh, beginner mistake they find all the time, they find themselves doing this so we can get into the discussion uh, that way. Uh, hey everybody, I'm trying to do the 14 day challenge thing, but I don't know what it is exactly. Uh, you can go to my web's website, uh, isrec.com, and uh, go to the community tab, and there should be a couple of uh, Q&A answers and questions down there. Um, and uh, you, you can, there's definitely something that describes what 14 day challenge is. Uh, okay. Eight, edge work. Edge work is your bane. You suck at shading. Can't blend skin tone. Oh wow, these are these are big ones. Um, edge work, shading. These are all technical though. Mm -hmm. Muddy skin. Damn, I gotta take a screenshot of the of these and just talk about them later. Uh, hope to God I remember. Uh, Vince, do you mind uh, reminding me? <laughs> My TA. Can't blend skin tone, edge work, shading, muddy skin. I'm going to try to answer all those four. I cannot screenshot any more of these, but let's just jump right in. What? What? Oh, okay. Um, so, for this one, it's a very, very big, obvious one. I'm going to try to find the reference you worked with. Uh, the exact reference. I'm sure you just did Shakira and images. Ah, it's right there. Um, so, what happens... Um, when we try to do exactly what the photograph is telling us. So the photograph told us she's got laugh lines. But you 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 duplicated the laugh lines in their line in their line depth all the way from the nose to the mouth where she has it just from the edges of her mouth and then it turns into more of a of a very uh, mild depression or a bump or a just just a contour instead of a deep wrinkle or cavity you made it as if she's got a deep cavity this is one massive beginner mistake I'm not gonna say not knowing the difference between form depth and cavity I'm gonna say the laugh line the laugh line is one big massive beginner mistake let's find an old person hello old person come here what they have, they've got the cavity. They're so old that over the years, that laugh line turned after years of smiling and being a nice old man, they ended up becoming, like, you gotta earn these, you know? You gotta smile enough. So, they turn into a deep wrinkle, which is exactly what you drew, but you gave her probably 30 years, 40 years plus on her age. So you gave us these kinds of age signatures or, or symbols on this young a face. She's like what, 40? Hitting 40? She does not have these kinds of wrinkles. Even on a on a just a emotionless face, they usually have them. You know, one without expression. They still have them. But she does not. And that's the problem here. Is that's one big beginner mistake. You guys misread form. Most specifically misreading it in the laugh line. Um, okay, so let's see what everybody's saying. Remind you of what? Oh my god, panic. <laughs> Remind me to answer the questions that I screenshot so I don't forget. <laughs> don't panic. Alright, so what do we do here? So in the reference I read that she was losing the depth of the cavity the higher we went, the higher up we go. So what we have to do is we have to enlarge our brush when we're trying to 
make this laugh work, make this smile work. All right. So look what happened. I got rid of the line, and lo and behold, there's not enough highlights here. This person here, under you know, lots of glamour and, and flash, just lots of flash, hidden a lot of the fundamentals they have issues with. So one of the fundamentals, massive fundamental issues you have, is just form. And I'm not talking shading. You guys call it shading because you don't have a vocabulary for it yet. The term is form, being able to sculpt. You can't sculpt. Sculpting means convincing me that this is a, an elevation and this is a cavity. And by use of the brush and brush techniques and blending, we, with very little effort and a speed painting type of technique, which is the ultimate mastery, create the feeling of an elevation and a depression. We know how to entertain edges and keep them solid and not blend them where they can't be blended. We know the difference between a spherical object and a spherical object that is in between a cube-like object that has sphereness to it. We know the difference between a sphere and a cube. We can see the pyramids um, in all kinds of structures. We can break things down into their geometry, and by breaking them down into their geometry, uh, we know exactly which parts are, are, are darkened and which parts don't blend. These are form studies, basic still life studies. Google basic forms for still life, um, and you'll find all of that. Uh, you'll find uh, lots and lots of references. So aside from color, which you have a little bit of an issue with, and muddy skin tones that you definitely have an issue with, uh, form and being able to sculpt is, is one reason why we don't have any highlights and one reason why you didn't read the reference as not a real wrinkle. All right. So this is one reason why your eyes couldn't tell the difference between this part and this part. You went straight in and made more and more and more of it, added more of a depth to the laugh line. You don't have a familiarity with age, meaning you need to get into studying different age groups and knowing exactly what you need to do in order to pull off that age, make it actually look like that person has aged. <clears throat> so we got rid of the line, and the line here is not really a line dependency at all. I can't seem to trace back any line dependency. Her eyes definitely feel like they're about to blink. It's, it's very well done on the eyes. Definitely have an eye for that. No pun intended. Um, but uh, as for where to place the highlights, just looking at this reference right here, I'm using this reference, where to place these highlights, they're, they all build up towards a high point right around here where the camera light was focused. So we're trying to make her look younger. You added even more depth, man. You're just trying to make Shakira look old. She's going to find you. These wrinkles right here, they are nowhere near as deep as the ones she has. The ones she has are basic function wrinkles. Maybe, yeah, just a little bit of age to them at this point. But definitely not anything that, that is 80, 60, 70, that kind of kind of thing. Even at 50, the wrinkles aren't that bad yet. At least I'm not on a healthy face or a face that hasn't gone through much or something. All right, so we're trying to make her look younger. And this, this, this uh, light, dark light pattern, this is one big uh, technique to look out for or, or, or thing to look out for in your reference and copy it down. So I'm not sure if this is exact reference you, you, you used, but uh, don't seem, I can't seem to find another one. Okay, so be careful with that laugh line. It adds age. It, it causes lots and lots of problems. I'm just trying not to make soft brush destroy everything. Of course, another common beginner mistake is the shadow on either side of the nose. We're trying to force the, the, the feeling that the nose is elevated by adding borders around it, like frames. I mean, that's not going to make a nose look realistic. What's going to make a nose look, look, look realistic is when you place your highlights in the right area so the nose feels like it really does protrude and catch the light. But just these changes right here have added a little bit more depth and youth to her face. And when we draw faces over and over and over again and we have mileage, we start, we start noticing. And there's only so many highlights in the face and it's all this triangle shape right here. And uh, as long as we remember to, to just um, blend a little bit extra with female faces, we're going to get that soft look. 
please unite the eyebrow with the skin around it. That's another common beginner mistake. Eyebrows that look like they're just painted on with Sharpie. I'm sure you guys have seen me co complain about those before. But these eyebrows do not look like they're painted on with Sharpie. They look like they have fuzziness to them. Right about here, they get a little thin at the top. So they have this fuzziness to them. And all I did was just attach a scatter brush to smudge tool. And I, I got this effect right here. And I can smudge as if I'm smudging in real life, as if I'm smudging with my hands. A couple more lights. And the reference is telling me she's got some light under her brows. So I'm just going to throw some there. And she's starting to look youthful again. Okay, so before, after. So lots of issues, but they all center around that form thing, and that's why you, you kind of didn't see that serious, the serious difference between a wrinkle and a bump. So don't confuse wrinkles with bumps. Write that back to me. Alright, so another common beginner mistake, um, and this has almost nothing to do with form, it's not even a, a, like a, a symptom of, of not enough studies or mileage, it's just something that people don't have an eye for sometimes. You do not just end the hair in just one, one straight um, uh, squadron, like what do you call like a, like a bunch of soldiers standing beside each other? Like the hair doesn't line up like that beside each other. It's not that. <laughs> it's very unyielding and and random and naturally and uh, natural and organic and and all over the place. So if you do anything, get messy with it. You know, one hair up here, one hair down there, one just keep going back and forth in a zigzag instead of one right beside the other, or else it'll look like a wig. Even in costume design nowadays, um, especially with the Hobbit movies, they started using hair piece by hair piece, like a piece of hair, like I'm saying like one inch width of hair beside the other so the hairline feels more natural instead of what they did before which was just out of wig and it looked so bad, it looked so bad, like if you guys look at, I can't really, I don't have time to show you every single one, but if you guys look at the way they, they, they had wigs on in the original Lord of the Rings series and then... Um, uh, like the ones from 2001 and whatnot, and then The Hobbit. It looks so, like they've advanced, like they've noticed. You can't just add a wig and expect it to feel real. It looks fake. And the hairline also, that also happens with skin. Uh, like with real faces, I mean. Uh, the skin itself needs to be a little bit more yellow, but the hair, I mean, it's not her natural hair color either. But here we have golds here, and we've got golds in there as well. So we need to get rid of that excessive pink in her hair, in her skin, sorry, by just go throwing a color correction layer on top, just so the skin matches the the the, the hair. Um, another common beginner mistake. Again, it's just a tiny little symbol, a tiny little uh, artifact. It's excessive tendons drawn on the neck. I don't know why you guys like this. Maybe when you were younger and we all drew like this. There was a point when we all drew like this. Like, Let me show you. You know, we were trying to draw a badass and we just finished watching Teen Titans and we want to make our own Titan. And uh, and we, we draw like this really bad guy and he's like, he holds his gun. He's got his little gun. And then we draw his neck and we do that. <laughs> All right, this thing, this sticks with us to the end of times. That's it. It's over. It sticks with us forever, um, because uh, it, it's it's a symbol. It's left behind. It stays in our brain, and we think that in order to make a neck feel real, we're not just gonna leave it alone, especially if it's a female. We're not just gonna give it a nice little tendon like that. No, we're gonna give him, like he did not skip neck day, <laughs> type deal. All right. So this this stays. This stays. So when we look at the reference, we have to make sure that we exaggerate whatever femininity is in there already. So it's a nice, even little neck. There isn't, there isn't this or this. It's just a tiny little bit right here and here. So technically, technically, this right, fuck, where is it? This right here. Have I lost connection? Did I lose connection? Why is Skype telling me I lost connection? Um, but this right here. 
uh, right here. This is the neck, and this is these are the sides of the neck. So technically, the neck doesn't have all those crazy tendons in it. All right. So yeah, I use some soft brush because compared to your rough work, really soft brush is going to look like it, it glows. But this is all we can do at this time. And uh, tip, please, 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 do not, do no, 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 not draw the the separation between each tooth. Never, ever, ever try to render each tooth. Write that back to me. Give the teeth some, like a haze of color. They will get nice and out of the way. They will, they will not look like they're stained with cigarettes and coffee. And they will feel natural. Okay, so what beginner mistakes did we cover today? Seaming together the features with the skin. So combining the hair, eyebrows, and lips. With the with the skin of, of, of the you know of the face, um, making more believable hair lines and just uniting everything, missing out on a lot of form. There's just lots and lots of form that's just gone uh, that we don't have anymore because uh, there wasn't enough uh, build up in the highlights or it could be like a ton of other reasons as well. Where are you? Okay. I think the whites of her eyes also are just a little bit too dark. But these are just some of the changes where you can start in correcting just some of this stuff. So before, after. Before, after. Looks much older, and even now she looks older. I would just completely get rid of uh, any excess wrinkling that's happening on the face. And before that, I mean, she looked older even because of this teeth stain. At least now we know what she's going to look like when she's older. Not that it matters. All right. So what's another beginner mistake? Come on, Photoshop. I believe in you. I don't know. I can't even convince myself. Why? Why, though? Like, why? What is the, what is the reason behind this? This computer is a beast. This computer is beast mode. Fuck Photoshop. Everything else is working. I swear to God, one of these days. <clears throat> um, Alright, so another common beginner mistake is, well, in this one, it's, this is just a quick one right here. I can't go through every single one of these, I'm sorry, but uh, whites of the eyes being too white. The whites of the eyes are not bioluminescent. They don't glow on their own. They're actually pretty gray. And if they're under this massive brow that you've got going on, then that means they're going to be even more shadowed. So you have no eyebrows on any of these guys. They look like Frieza or, uh, or or Vegeta or something. Who doesn't have eyebrows in DBZ? Like everybody. Super Saiyan 5? Super Saiyan 10? I uh, forget. One of them, he doesn't have any eyebrows. And that would cast the shadow downward. So not casting shadows on the eyeballs and making the eyeballs too white. That's one big issue. Okay. Okay. Um, then there is this one. So some beginners, like some students, they're not really beginners. Again, again these, these stay way into your intermediate experience. Uh, the neck is always way too thin. They just never know what to do with the neck. Uh, starting the neck from right after the jawline ends, so right at the corner of the jawline, that's typically where it should be. Anorexic faces, anorexic bodies have this kind of neck, but at this point, no amount of fat is left on the cheeks. And the face looks non-human. Uh, it looks very, very dead. Uh, a skeletal. So what we have to do is add some width on the sides of the neck like that. And once we do that, we go on to the shoulders. Don't try to draw the shoulders before you get a neck down. So what I'm going to do here is just carry that over. When the neck is too thin like this, it feels like a prepubescent like child. It feels like childish, like child anatomy, like a childlike anatomy. And the reason why that's 
you can't get away with that even if you're trying to go for a feminine skinny looking girly girl is because it's just simply impossible to hoist an adult head um, on a on, a, on an adult body with a, with a, with a child neck it's 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 a, it's a deformity it's not anatomically proportionate the body grows proportionately on a healthy you know body so you just have to widen the neck just a little bit the neck at this point is way too dark and for the 14 day challenge just refrain from working all the way to the edge of the canvas never touch the edge of the canvas with your work that's another beginner mistake always always you know everything you draw always has to reach the edge of the canvas sometimes just let stuff get blurry near the edges they're not important they're there by you know by force there if we could just have our paintings float around that would be nice too frames are good for composition but other than that don't put anything that's bright or anything that's a POI on the edge of the canvas. <clears throat> Anything that's attached to her at the edge of the canvas, that's very close to the focus or the, that, that crosshair focus, um, will make our eyes travel to the edge of the canvas and then escape. You want to trap the viewer's eyes inside. So I'm just lightening the neck. Another massive beginner mistake I really wanted to talk about today is people always know where the light source is, the color of the object, but they never ever think about the environment the environment color. Why? What's the environment in this case? It's the room, it's the studio this photograph was shot in, or this painting was painted in. So it means that the room has to be somewhat bright in order for all of this, all of these values to be believable. When the room is bright enough we kinda notice, yeah she was a darker skinned girl but there's a lot of light shining on her. Just take a look here at the nose, at the uh, eye lights. All of these are indicating that the light source is nearby and very bright and angled in such a way that her whole face is, is uh, displayed. But when it's this dark, we would not have this much light happening on her face. Her eyes are, her eyes are from the dark environment, but her skin is from the light environment. So all we have to do to push that final believability that she's actually in this light environment is just to lighten her eyes. The whites of her eyes will be lightened. They're too dark at this point. And they'll just feel like she's actually in this room. A bit of light there. Okay, I hate soft brush. I'm so sorry about what soft brush does to your painting sometimes. Okay. So there's that. Before after. So she actually looks like she's in a room that's lit up. Might have ruined the eyes just a little bit, but I have to just uh, bring in this unit. Maybe I'll get some more of the original shape back through. So before, they look bloodshot, like bloody, like vampire eyes. And after. And then we take a look again. These aren't just, you know, like tiny little instances of, of bad anatomy. No, these are consistent like issues that almost every beginner has. Almost every beginner I've ever taught or, or, or met. These are, these are the issues that they deal with. And just to think that these stay, these stay well into your advanced years and intermediate years. They linger. These issues, if they're not addressed, they linger. Get references and fix that neck issue. That was a very thin neck. Start remembering the light environment in the room. It's not just about light source and object. Why do we, why do you guys forget the room? The room is important. But don't let the brightness of the room darken lighten the object excessively. Make sure there's a nice balance. Okay. And there needs to be a cast shadow off this uh, on this neck off this face. Just like that. So before, after. Let's see what everyone's saying. Um, this forgives you. This is the third image. <laughs> uh, sketchy times. I was trying my bad. I really see the improvement when you show the before and after. Mm -hmm. 
And, and they're, they're tiny little things that add up and make you draw better images tomorrow. These are all studies that we're having issues with, remember that. Um, another example of the neck issue is right here. It's just, it's just always going to happen. But sometimes we forget the presence of the jawline as well. The jawline and the neck, they're just hand in hand problematic areas. So we need to show where that jawline is. Everyone has a jawline. Everybody has a jaw. You eat and you talk, you have a jaw. Again, unless it's a deformity. You don't throw that deformity excuse at on me. Some people don't have a jaw. Really? No. I didn't know. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I have arguments with myself. Okay, so I'm just tucking that in. I'm trying to get that jaw back out. Kadoki. And then that, that neck. Uh, uh, just get rid of it. I don't need it. Don't show too much trapezius and it, too soon. I mean, why are you showing it? Besides, you don't have enough sh uh, space over here. I know you want to practice that area. That's fine, good. But give yourself some vertical space. What is this? Using a square thing is also a beginner mistake. Know the amount of space you're going to need for a vertical presentation of a portrait. Make your canvases vertical. The 14-day challenge gets you in the habit, good habits of everything and everything. So when we forget this, we also end up drawing really, really short, stunted-looking uh, faces or things. Stunted everything, no matter what we're drawing. A, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, what 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 we, like figures or a table? <laughs> we're gonna stunt. We're gonna, that paper, that table's gonna feel stunted. All right. So look at look at what happened. The shoulders like eh, because the canvas was too short, and the jawline was completely missing. So you had like that triangular teardrop face, and now the jaws are back. And there are a couple of other issues, but this would, this would just turn into a 14-day challenge critique, which I don't do. Um, but you guys can do them for each other. I usually do them for people who do graduate the 14-day challenge, so I, I give them like a day 13 or day 14 critique or something, and they can correct it. Um, one other big beginner mistake, uh, it has a lot to do with composition is not being able to focus, not being able to decide where the POI is, the point of interest or the focus is in a painting. So right here we have like this really really rendered almost white outline around the prop but the portrait is so blurry. So there are so many things here that we can do to contest this amount of detail that you've added. Firstly we need to show where the eyes edges are. So the eye has edges all around it. So this is one area. The nose has too much shadow on that side over there. Too much shadow on this side, another another you know example of that mistake. We just want to put that shadow there because we need to show, hey, this is where the nose starts, okay? Okay, viewer, this is where the nose starts. So I'm just gonna put a shadow right here to help you out. But you don't need you don't need that. Alright, all we need, all we need, see every time I'm telling you, every time I get rid of this shadow. It's always that this is not bright enough. And when this gets bright enough, then it'll really feel like it's protruding. And it's out there. Look at that. Damn, baby. Look at that sexy form. Alright, connect that brow a little bit closer. Women have a little bit of a highlight under their arch. Her, her um, brow seems to be going up pretty high. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find that edge. I'm going to get an edge brush, edgy brush, and I'm just going to throw that in there just to give us that side edge of the nose. This edge will act as if the nose is being, um, you know, the nose is geometric, so you don't need to, uh, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. There's three ways to make something detailed. Sharpen with your brush, so, so sharpen edges. The old-fashioned way that some people, only that one they use, like they only use this one, which is shrink your brush. Or, increase contrast. Um, probably can't read my writing. 
Uh, so when we have, I can't even read my own writing, uh, when we have these three at our disposal, these three we're going to use on the POI. If there's something that is contesting the POI and it's using all three, emit one. Get rid of one. You can keep its sharp edges, but you got to get rid of its contrast. But you can keep its sharp edges if you want it somewhat detailed. The hair, you can get rid of the contrast, but you can keep the sharp edges, and you can shrink your brush. So you got to pick and choose, but you can't use all of them if you're using, if you're supposed to use all of them on the face. So I'm using both, all three of these on, on this face right now. And for the nose, I don't want to over contrast the nose. This is not related to, to POI anymore. This is just about structuring. If you don't give your edges a chance, you will end up using high contrast where it doesn't belong. Write that back to me. Give your edges a chance, for the love of God. Give them a chance. Give your Shrink your brush. Get a nice edge brush. Stop using soft brush. Get yourself a nice edge brush and, uh, and start creating some, some edges. Edgy brush just means like a square brush or something with a sharp edge on the side. It's nothing fuzzy or blendy or shit like that. That's not going to help you. All right, the top of this nostril gets some light. Because it's part of the bit that looks up at the light. Of course, it's not going to get as much as the tip of the nose because it's just not that uh, exposed to the light as the tip of the nose. But it does warrant some highlight. It just connects up into the nose like that. Nope. All right. And then the top of the cheek, because this light is so strong, it's moving down the side of the nose, get some light on it. And then that massive nose, which before you didn't explain or show as an elevation so much, excuse me, that you missed um, the cast shadow. Now we're, we're going to place in the cast shadow where it belongs. Let's just use this smudge tool to get through this quicker and then just decrease that excessive contrast so I don't want to use contrast here now I'm just contesting looking at my navigator now I'm just causing trouble so I have to darken the contrast but I'll keep the edge all right and I'm just using darken here to just counter that contrast a darken layer nice and friendly very nice Use my smudge tool to just sum this up real quick. And I connect that into that just to give the nose a cutoff point and then blend that a little bit because this is a seamless connection into the rest of the face. So I don't want it geometric. It does connect back. So all we're doing here is we're just reinforcing all of the basic values of a face that we would have discovered on our own if we had done a 14-day challenge or something that focuses on the, the form signatures in a portrait. 14-day challenge is great for that. If you're on one, congratulations, stay on it. Fight to the bitter end. So I'm just using some radial shading to show where the lip is highest. And if she does have that laugh line like we saw earlier on that Shakira painting, we are... We're just going to add it with a nice thick brush. We're going to add that that cheekbone line or smile line. Or, and if she's not smiling, it'll just be like that cheekbone thing. We do not try to do this effect with a thin brush. It'll look like a wrinkle. It'll look like she only aged in one area of her face. Like gravity only affected like that one area. Just adding those cheek marks if you have to have them. And I'll show you the before and after. It was just a, uh, there's still issues. There's still issues for why this here is. Oh, see. Shut up. Stop. Shh. She's in heat. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm just getting rid of that contrast, like I said earlier. There's no need for it to be so excited. Even if it's metallic. Take it easy. Even if it's metallic. We have to bring it down. This has to be the focus again. So where else could we have some edges? Um, there's so many areas. Let's, let's, let's try to use some contrast to make some detail. So on the waterline of the eye, there's going to be a couple of like, you know, specular little points here. Highlight on the inner part. This whole upper area needs a little bit of an edge to it. <clears throat> Just like that. Gonna get some more contrast. I'm using contrast and edge work here. My brush isn't really that small. It could go a little smaller, and I'm not really stippling or dabbing or creating like lash by lash. Okay, so now the focus is back to her. One thing that is not really very good for the painting is this thin line that's high contrast. So um, this line here is bright against the dark background and is really super, super bright. So what I'm doing here, I'm bringing it down. It'll still be there. It'll just not contest the face, of course. All right. If you have to have highlight on that uh, headpiece or hairpiece or headdress, you can have a little bit right here, something that is attached to the face or close to the what's happening with the face. This cast shadow needs to be a little sharper. It's so careful. Don't be careful with your cast shadows. Be, be courageous with your cast shadows. Cast them. Attempt them. Your work will look amazing. I wish somebody told me, you know, it's okay to cast a shadow. It's okay to make a mistake with a cast shadow. I, I went on Jana Schreimer's stream one time when I was younger, and I asked her this question, and she laughed at me. I don't know if she'll never remember me, but she laughed at me. She was on the voice chat on live stream, and she laughed, and I was like, hey, Jana Schreimer. I didn't talk like that, but it sounded like <laughs> How do you know to put the shadow like there? Like, how do you know the shadow needs to go there? Like, why did you put it there instead of there or there? <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, I didn't understand, you know, you think of the geometry, you invent a spot where the shadow will cast, it will be cast, and you think about where the presence of the light source is, and, you know, that whole business. But she didn't understand my question, I guess, so she started laughing. Uh, that's not the point. The point is, I never had anybody tell me, you know, have some balls to just throw it wherever you want to throw it. Try to cast a shadow. Ha Nobody told me, hey, it's okay. I don't know where to put it. This is just me guessing. I know where the light source is generally, but really, I'm just, you know, dicking around. I, I have no idea where it is, but I just put it here just because. Like, I would have loved to hear that. I would have loved to hear someone tell me it's okay to just not know what you're doing and just try it anyway. So it's okay to not know what you're doing. Try it anyway. All right, write that back to me. Maybe the cast shadow is just a little bit longer. And uh, if this cast shadow here is this shade and it's casting on her face, why is this cast shadow so dark? It looks almost like a mustache. All cast shadows should have the same exact color on a face. They should be consistent. If your cast shadow here is this color, then this color should be used here. I know that this color might be might be see-through, so I might just have to warm it up just a little bit. All right, so all of this stuff, you could have easily made this mistake outside of the masterpiece environment. You could have done this in a grayscaled, friendly, student-friendly setup of the 14-day challenge. You could have just tried it there, made some mistakes, safely made them on a grayscale painting, fix them easily, have lots of people tell you, okay, this feels wrong, this looks wrong, and um, if you care for that, if you're okay with people telling you this looks wrong in your painting, then you would have gone home and fixed it, and tried it again, and then again, and again, for 14 times, and you can try it for a month if you want, but two weeks is typically that, that length that takes you to, to get used to anything, really, for me. I feel like it takes me two weeks to get used to anything if I try it for two weeks straight, which is why I chose two weeks for this challenge. Because typically a habit is formed between two weeks and 28 days or something that I read. So I'm just going to go for, like, the two-week thing to make it appealing to students. Okay. And then now I'm just going to blur that. 
okay to make mistakes. It's okay to try something you never tried before. And it's going to look good probably because it's something that you never had before in your painting. It's an extra little prop. But let's look at the before and after and see how off that focal point was. It's one of the biggest uh, beginner mistakes. So before, so blurry over here, shadow was too dark, the nose feels just a little bit uh, forced. You did fix it compared to the before you had in, in the community. My eyes just keep going here. And then after. My f the face has gone back as the point of interest. It's a little bit too high in contrast, but I used the values you had. I would bring the values down even more and try to rebuild up that highlight. But she's supposed to be pale like a moon, which is why I just kept it. Okay, I'm just making a longer shadow, more confident shadow. And we got rid of the highlight, the excess highlight in that, that headdress. Alright. So... Um, is it just me or does her mouth seem to be too low? Yeah, her mouth is a little bit low. I didn't want to change the face too much or fit it into my prescri uh, prescription. My description of beauty. Um, but you can go ahead and do that. If you want that shadow back in her face, you have to know that you're doing it. So if you wanted to give her that insomniac eye, which is really nice on a model. It's like for so long models looked so sick, it started to look pretty. I know that's really twisted, but models are always really, really underfed and malnutrition. So when we have a nutrition, malnutrition, I don't know, but, um, you know, they always look a little sickly. So that became kind of like a, a staple for models after a while to have that, that bag under the eye. So if you wanted it back, you can put it back in, but you have to know that that's what you're doing. If she's like a, you know, like a... Something that stays up at night, which is the moon goddess or something. She probably have lots of that going on. It's not so much, don't worry. I'm going to bring it down. It works as a prop more than an actual, like, deliberate placement of something. So if that, basically meaning what you had before is you had a lot of shadow down here, which is what I'm responding to. And then after that, we just kind of bring back that dark circle. So we put, we add the puff and the dark circle, but we're deliberate with it. We're not accidental with it. We're putting it there um, on purpose. So before, after, like a more realistic version of what you had. Before the shadows are just sitting there, the lower eyelid wasn't edged out enough. So these are some common beginner mistakes. Look out for them. They are very, very specific. They, they are very hard to locate. But once you find them, it should be very easy to just counter them and tackle them in your work. Just completely emit them. Just whatever I did to fix them today, you start doing that ASAP. Don't wait until your studies and then you start doing it. Don't say, oh, I have to do some studies. I have to dedicate a week to, that, week to this. These things are, these mistakes are so obvious and so present in our work. We just got to stop them right now. <clears throat> they're so specifically there. These, the, you know, the thin neck, the, the excess shadow on either side, the, the, the laugh line wrinkle. It, it, it's just all, you can go ahead and do some form studies. Of course, I recommend that. I always recommend form studies, organic and geometric. But, um, you know, just, just for quick res results, just stop doing those specific things. I can mind read Isterek's horrified feelings about this already. It's just all the ways people could misinterpret and exaggerate that advice. Um, even like when it's not needed. Yes, it is. A big, another massive beginner mistake is blending too much, even when it's not needed. That's, that's one big one, and that's technique and a lack of knowledge of where not to blend, which means you haven't done enough form studies that are geometric form studies that teach you, like, this is the side of the edge. Don't blend here because this is another angle. It goes off. And another tangent. It does not blend. It's not all. Not everything is spherical. It's not a Nerf world. <clears throat> I know it takes a lot of effort to realize the obvious. Your mic sound sometimes sounds like it disappears and comes back. Oh, that's because I kind of cover my mouth just a little bit because I'm like itching my eye because I'm allergic to like. <laughs> 
Oh, wait. I'm just going to sharpen that because that soft brush is diabolical. Okay. So any more questions regarding beginner mistakes? I'm going to just quickly go over the questions I looked over earlier. So you can't blend skin tone. When we blend skin tones, what we're always doing is... Okay. When we're always... We want to block in first. When we block in... Excuse me. When we block in, after we're done blocking in, what we have to do is... Son of a bitch. Damn it. Ow. All right. So we block in this shadow, we get a nice little highlight there, and then we just do that, and then we just do that. Um, when we want to blend skin tone, like skin tone specifically, that texture, we drop our opacity all the way down. Because when we do that, that alongside the color, the eyedropper tool, we keep going back, and what we're doing is polishing. I'm not going to go here because I'm going to pretend like this is the edge of the face, but let's pretend that this is a like a, the side of the face or something like that, like a gradient, and I'm going to build up that bright spot ever so slowly, and look how low my opacity is, and then the, the more polished I want to make it, the lower I go, so I really want to perfect it, that's how we blend skin, we go really low with our opacity, it's just jumping between 15 and 30 really, depending on how fast I want to work, and if you want to be super careful, like I have to go back down to 15 or something, and extend that highlight down. Alright, so this is how I blend skin. When I'm blending skin, when I'm painting a portrait or a pinup, this is how I'm blending skin. I hate edge work. Edge work is my bane. Um, edge work just, you know what I just did here, and I, and I kind of made that soft brush reach over the edge. Edge work is just going back, raising all the way up to 100% and then redefining that edge that I accidentally over blended. This edge might be a, you know, like a fundamental structural edge that needs to be there in order to show that this is an actual body and geometric and it has bone structure under it. So it could be a million reasons why this can't be blended, but the point is to not blend it, to make a point out of going back and not low opacity anymore, you go all the way back up and make that a nice sharp edge. So you, you won't know where these edges are unless you do some form studies. Suck at shading. Again, form studies. When you do geom geom geometric shapes, shading, if you break everything to down to its polygon. So this is why these uh, low polys of the portrait are so important. Because what we do is we go back down a, a, you know, a level or two in polys, even lower. And what we do is we break everything down to its geometry. So if you don't know how to shade this, yet, it means you don't know this yet, because this sits under this. So what we, all we have to do is just know, okay, this is the top part of that cube, the, the, everything starts off as, you know, really large brush strokes, and the light source is coming out of here. You won't know how to shade if you're not thinking about where the light source comes from. Where is the light source in the painting? Where did it go? Where is it coming from? Which direction is it in? What's the intensity? Is it going to make the room brighter as well as it makes the object brighter? Muddy skin. Muddy skin means your, your values, your skin tones, your grayscales are too dark. You need to raise them up all the way. Keep only blacks where you need them. In pigmentation, like dark, heavy brown eyebrows or, or eyelash line or pupil darkness or nostril darkness or lip darkness. Those are the only things that should stay dark if you're painting skin in grayscale and you move over into color. If you're painting straight into color and they look dark, you're choosing two dark colors. Your colors are too dark. Lighten them up. Okay, uh, Muddy Skin about choosing color palette. Uh, okay, color palette, um, is that like a whole other thing? But all I can say right now is make sure you work with neighboring colors. It's best to start with analogous colors, then try to mess around with colors from different neighborhoods. Try to start between, you know, if you really want a wash that's more cool, between blue, green, turquoise, sky blue, and all the way back to navy. Tr stick in this department. If you have to introduce a red, make sure it's a nice, cool red, and you're not really using like this color right here. This is a red, um, and it's a cool red, cooler than this, which is really bloody and warm. Uh, so you stay analogous if you're trying to choose a really, really good 
uh, like basically neighboring is what it means you're trying to go choose good values if you're going to have an excess amount of pastels use analogous colors but the pastel version this is a pastel version really washed out these colors will match all right they will always always match of course this will not match because it's just all the way there um, so you might want to find the cooler version of that baby pink same exact thing on the warm side uh, same exact thing on the rich, richer part. Just stay analogous and choose which, the pastel or the saturation, the vibrant or the completely grayed out. Um, but as long as you're staying neighboring, no matter which area cho you choose, which subcategory you choose of that analogous neighborhood, you're sticking to uh, neighboring values. You're not going to use super saturated on one guy who's wearing this shirt and then another guy gets like this same exact color but like over here, that you can't do that unless that guy had a neon light light up jacket. All right. Okay. Where did it come from? Where did it go? Where did it come from? Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> oh my gosh. Cotton Eye Joe. Any tips for a colorblind artist? <laughs> um, is that a serious question? Oh my god, it's a serious question. I'm so sorry. Um, don't try to color our suite. If you're colorblind, stop trying to color because your your versions will end up being oversaturated. Uh, if you're colorblind, master your grayscales first. Uh, in fact, just continue with grayscale and perfect that. Use all that effort that you would have otherwise wasted on trying to match colors, which you won't be able to see. Um, use that on grayscale. The reason why you shouldn't color for now is because for you a yellow won't read as yellow unless you really raise it up in the value scale all of a sudden you're gonna have a white sitting in there in the middle of a bunch of grays just so that you can see that yellow so when you're seeing it doesn't mean we have an e equal experience uh, with that color as you do so stick to grayscale uh, for now and just believe that you have enough vibrancy in there in that color but gray grayscale is where you can um, really perfect your form from now on. It's, it's, it's a disability. If you can see color blindness as a disability, but in fact I see it as an opportunity to become a master of form. Like you, 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 you miss out on one side and you, you get one arm taken away from you, one sense taken away from you and your other senses are just heightened. So, uh, so think of it like that. Okay. So I'm done today. If you guys are interested in following me everywhere else, just go to istabrak.com. And the, the challenge is done over next week on the 30th, the, uh, the, the Witch's Hovel Challenge. So community. Um, so everyone's been posting. I'm so happy to see all these amazing posts, uh, all these amazing attempts at designing this. this. This challenge is really meant to enhance your ability to draw something specifically. You know, you're finding that one object and you're rendering it not depending on stamp brushes or the illusion of detail, but you really are creating that detail. Uh, remember that um, detail relief, detail relief pattern. So don't over saturate with detail in one section of the painting because the painting is just going to fall towards that section. It's going to lose balance. Um, always try to give like empty space and then clutter, empty space and then clutter, empty space and then clutter. Always follow that pattern that looks really, really good. Uh, but these are looking amazing. I can't wait to go through all of these and just talk about them. They just look wonderful. Keep going. Remember that when you're posting, you have to post into theme submission. You can't post into discussion. If some of you have posted your your um, your sketches into discussion, um, that's problematic. All right, a couple of other rules. This is not your gallery. So if you're posting fan art and saying, "Hey, this is my latest work. It's a fan art of this," I don't, I don't like that. This is not a fan. This is not a gallery for your fan art experiences and your daily journals in your fan art world of fan art. All right. I'm sorry. I have to be so, so, so crushingly honest about this. This is a gallery for artists who are attempting studies, who are attempting masterpieces, who are attempting challenges. Who are attempting all kinds of topics and, and you know whatever if there's figure drawing or portraiture or 
landscape or environment or, or object or material or texture or form, whatever they're attempting. This is what it's here for. If you have a, something that you have been working on, like these colored pieces, I'm perfectly okay with that. Like I said, masterpieces are fine. But please write something here indicating what you're having trouble with. Don't just post it and just expect me to just sit there and say, What's, what, what, so what are you having trouble with? Are you looking for compliments or are you looking for critiques? I mean, if you're not looking for critiques, you should not be posting here. Post in your gallery. If the reason why you guys aren't posting a, a word or two along with your painting, it means you're not looking for a critique. Just realize that you're going to get one. And if you don't indicate exactly where you're having issues, you're not going to get an accurate one. And if you're not, if you haven't written anything at all, I'm going to delete it. And if you try to post every single day after someone gave you a 16 line uh, critique on your previous work the next day, and the next day you go in and post something else, um, I don't think you gave that person enough credit. I don't think you looked at that person's comment if they posted something on your work. So p take the time before you post again. Take those critiques and take them back to your desk and apply them to your work. If you want to post sketches, post them together all at the same time. Do not post every single day, uh, sketch by sketch. I will not allow that. That, that floods out the wall very fast and you, be you become the, the main topic of the entire community. Um, what else? Uh, I guess that's it for now. Um, fan art. Uh, that's another thing I've added recently to the rules. If you're going to be posting fan art, that's fine. It's a topic. It's something to draw. But don't just post it there and say, this is something that I've recently been working on. Um, you know, I've been doing this and this with it. Thanks for the critique. No. No. All I see those as uh, is, is an opportunity to get you some views. If I see links to your gallery elsewhere, I get, I get very angry. This is for educational purposes. This community is getting really big. And these are the rules that are going to help control the wall. This wall is going to get populated very fast soon. It's already getting populated posts every hour, like four posts every hour or something like that. So these need to be um, mediated a little bit tighter. And uh, Vince, if you want to um, volunteer as a moderator here as well, I don't mind. But please remember these rules. They're for your benefit. It'll be easier for you to track down your the, the people you're critiquing. It'll be easier for you to track down your own work. It's a lot neater and a lot more organized this way. If you have to post your gallery, you know, stuff every single day, post it in your gallery and you can link us a quick feature of your gallery. But if you link it every day, again, I'm going to just delete it. All right, 14-day challengers, however, can post every day because that's a 14-day challenge. It's a challenge that will only last two weeks. It's not, and I get spam, spam notification here as well. So I'm always going to be, like, a, you know, aware of who's posting every day. And I'm going to delete that stuff. Okay. Um, let's see what everybody's saying. Sorry about my rant. What about common colors like red, green, and blue, and orange for border field? Um, just make sure you control saturation levels. Not one of them is only saturated, but all of them are saturated equally. You can... Uh, you can... Um, grayscale first and see if they match in that and then try to see if you even need to go as high as a primary like a crayon crayon red or something like that um, all right so that's it uh, that's it for today thank you everyone for coming um, have a great day guys bye bye